episode of Ekiti on the Move, I am Tunji Saliu. The administration of Governor Kyle Defiemi clocked two years on October 16, though the significant progress made in 24 months is worth rolling out the drums for in celebration, but the time we're in called for moderation. This did not, however, affect the series of activities to mark the anniversary. This include commissioner of projects, Interaction with the people, state of the state addressed by Mr. Governor to give account of his stewardship in the last one year, and a flag off of new projects. Keep a date with us on this program for the next few weeks as we bring to you these activities. Mawa, let's have our quick takes before we let you into our focus this week. In Focus This Week. <music> Governor Fayemi marks two years of steady strides in Ikiti. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Remember what I said in that inaugural speech, that at the time I'm leaving, I want this place to be a place to walk, to live, and to play. Running with this vision of making Nikiti State a destination of choice to live, work, and find leisure has been the preoccupation of Governor Kyle Defiami and his team in the last two years. The vision so well communicated and projected is coming to be like the words of legendary Nostradamus. I don't want anxiety about the next one year. This, this first year has been more about foundation, as you put it. Foundation laying, uh, reactivating old uh, work, rebuilding the ethics of our society and the value reorientation. That's essentially what we've done in this past one year. But the next 365 days uh, would see it experiencing bold reforms across the length and breadth of our economy, across the length and breadth of our state. And I see it becoming the hub that we want it to be, a place to live, to work, and for leisure. The words of yesterday have since been transformed into activities reflected in noteworthy and evident projects in the FOCA five pillars of administration. Governance. Governor Kyle DeFiami has consistently proved that good governance is both an art and a science, an interplay of creative innovations and clear end result of carefully applied principles. Little wonder that the last two years have yielded government transparency, prudent management of resources, more dedicated and motivated workforce. More so are effective service delivery, citizen inclusion in governments, enactment and implementation of people-oriented laws and policies, among others. The last celebration, the team was working the talk. And so what you are seeing now is for the past two years, that in spite of all the disruptions, 
all the unforeseen circumstances that happened. Um, as a government, we are steadily delivering on our promises to our people without disrupting the ecosystem. You know, it has been a lot of challenge, but in spite of all these storms, Mr. Governor is winning on all fronts. So against all odds, we are winning steadily and we are impacting the lives of the people and we are building a legacy of responsive and responsible governance. There is a high synergy between the civil service, the civil servants and the political office holders. We all work together as a team. Regularly, the Office of the Head of Service and Labor Leaders, we hold our meetings to appraise the situation of things, how far government has been able to meet with the resolutions agreed upon with labor. And so there is high synergy. The impact of all these are even more evident in the successes recorded in other four pillars of administration. Agricultural revolution. Yes, Ekiti State agricultural sector has been transformed by good thinking that empowers vast human potentials. The state has witnessed a shift from arable farming as survivor cultural practice to a private sector-led, profitable line of business aptly called agribusiness. Accordingly, Ekiti government provides enabling environment, basic infrastructure and requisite incentives to attract big players in the agri sector to the state. Two years down the line, big investors like Dangote Farms, and Stallion, and JMK Foods are into massive rice cultivation and processing in Ekiti State. The northern corridor of the state is now a hub with companies like FMS Farms, Promise Point, Arag Resources, all engaged in cassava cultivation and processing. As we speak, Promacido has already turned around the old Ikun Dairy Company to a 10,000 litre per day milk production line. Meanwhile, government is clearing about 1,500 hectares of land to ease the burden of would be investors willing to lash on the opportunities security provides. Government has completed pre feasibility study for the special agro industrial processing zone. This is a 40,000 hectare area planned to house processing operations focused on rice, cassava, dairy, cocoa, cashew, and maize processing. A World Bank assisted 1,000 km rural access to a Greek marketing project, RAMP, now on the way in the state. All these are aside various capacity building workshops and seminars matched with credit lines and loan schemes facilitated by government to aid farmers. This is a sound socio-economic grassroots inclusion manifest of His Excellency, Governor Fayemi's vision stated earlier. Social investments. The Fayemi-led administration in Ekiti State has established that the greatest resource in its hand is the human resource. More so in its social investment in form of workers' welfare, improved health care, and care for the elderly and vulnerable. Really a constant state policy. Perhaps no occasion has tested the efficacy of the social investment framework of the administration than the current COVID-19 scourge. The activation and response of existing elements like the social register, stipend for the called Owarubo, food bank, Onji Arubo and other incentives from the office of the First Lady have all contributed to the success of the relief palliative. These were rolled out by the states to cushion the effect of the pandemic on its people. Investment in the health sector continued unabated, even in the midst of a limited economy caused by COVID-19. It included renovation or new construction of health centers, provision of equipment and distribution of medical essentials to pregnant women and babies. It is even more noteworthy that the state health insurance scheme was launched during this period. As we speak, 
It has over 7,000 equity people registered with the scheme. Indeed, a new deal in access to affordable and qualitative health care for the people. Knowledge Economy The underlying philosophy behind Governor Fiamin led pursuit of knowledge economy is focused on not only celebrating the state's esteemed scholarly heritage. The mission is to convert its acknowledged highest number of professors and other leading academic pioneers per capita in Nigeria into a useful and sustainable economic resource base. The ultimate is the creation of a quadrangle of educational institutions driven by cutting-edge technology to engage in research, skill development, creative arts, and entrepreneurship. Certainly, a knowledge-based economic orb that will be known for education and tourism the world over. In its characteristic manner of keeping its eye on the ball, the administration has, in the course of the challenging year, signed a memorandum of understanding with a private investor to lay 600 kilometers of fiber optics cable for broadband penetration. This was after Governor Fiamis slashed the whooping 4,500 naira right of way fees previously paid by telecoms companies to Patri 145 naira, making Equity State the first to comply with that national directive. The attendant benefits of these policies include creation of new jobs and businesses, access to digital education, tech innovation, and improved healthcare. The foundation for the knowledge economy was laid as soon as Governor Fayemi assumed office in 2018. He abolished all fees in primary and secondary schools, making education free at those levels. He also followed up by personally championing enrollment of school children to reinforce the campaign that no child of school age is left behind. The last 12 months have also seen work progress on four new modern secondary schools in the state capital, Adwekiti. Massive renovation of school buildings, provision of amenities and supply of instructional materials to aid qualitative education have all been completed. I want to thank the uh, state governor, uh, governor, Dr. Fayemi, for bringing this uh, school to our, our environment. Because since, even since the school has started, even with the workers and everything, has been moving so fine. Even me in particular, I'm so happy for this development because I'm into sewing of bags. I know there will be a great development in my work. The business will move forward. Even the people in the environment are very happy. And the school is very beautiful. I love the school. I love the environment. This leadership has been uh, so fantastic that we need people like this to lead us in this country. Infrastructure and industrial development. The vision of Equity State as a place to live, work and play would not be complete without requisite infrastructure, which in turn aids industrial development. The Governor Fiamin led administration is accustomed to this. Perhaps it is the relentless effort by this administration so far that has been attracting investors in droves. No fewer than three ongoing water projects in the state are nearing completion, ready for commission. They include rehabilitation of Aero and Ebe dams, lay of water pipes and beading of reservoirs, and imposing headquarters of the State Water Corporation is already done in the skyline. Though Ekiti is reputed to have the best road network in the country, no fewer than six major road projects are ongoing across the state. Some of the roads lead to the state economic interest. 
other projects aimed at improving infrastructure and making the state more conducive for work and leisure include two secretariat complexes for civil servants, Ojaba Main Market, now fully completed, and the imposing Civic Center, among others. What people should actually see in this government is they should not see the brick and mortars in terms of physical structures. They should see a bold attempt on the part of government to put in place structures and institutions that will dispense prosperity. To me, that is one of the highest points of this government. Alone we can do little, but together we can do much. I want our people to continue to carefully assess the government, appreciate the inhibitions that are around, and continue to support them, support the government. I'm sure with the level of support and um, credibility that you see around, the heavens are the limit for the next few years. In all, Governor Carol de Fayemi has remained committed to improve people-focused social inclusion, always fully conscious of his promises and working in the most ingenious and creative way to keep the sheep afloat. He inspires leadership with uncommon determination in the face of great challenges, including those occasioned by the crippling COVID-19 pandemic. Perhaps it is for this cause that he came and is staying the direction in steady strides, impacting lives and building a strong progressive legacy. If the money shows the day as the adage goes, then Ikitikete should look forward with more excitement for more dividends of democracy in the next 365 days. One of the citizen participation and inclusion in governance strategy of Governor Faimi, right from his first time in office, is holding town hall meetings with the people to get their buy-in to budget preparation. The tradition continued the second time with the first one taking place on October 12, 2019 for the 2020 budget. Coincidentally, on October 12, 2020, Mr. Governor, and his team again hit the road to meet with the people over the 2021 budget. The town hall meetings held in three locations across the three sanctuary districts of the state, with the leadership of various local councils, traditional rulers, community leaders, and market women in attendance. Always a time for fun fear and good cheer as the people are always eager to receive the governor and his team, as well as show appreciation to them for making them part of the budgeting process. This year's meeting is in line with the COVID-19 protocols. The first port of call was equally in the North Sanitary District. In line with the best global practices, our budget preparation, our budget preparation is a bottom up and participatory approach. It affords our people at the grassroots level the opportunity to interact with Mr. Governor and present the needs of our towns and communities for consideration in the state and our budget. As it is customary, the 2021 budget will stem from the grassroots, taking input from our towns and communities, which will form an integral part of the 2021 budget. We enjoy the representatives of our people here present to make useful contributions to our 2021 budget. Kindly avail us information on revenue building ideas and resources in your area, which are yet to be tapped. In addition, 
The community representatives presented the demands. The other present the underlisted requests for inclusion in the year 2021 budget of a given state from the government. One, rehabilitation of Otto Oso Orago. Two, provision of transformers for Otto Ikun, Erimokwe, Igogo, and Oso Ikuti. Three, provision of police posts at the local government border within Ogwa and Tongwara State. Four, relocation of all safety and legal primary schools equity from the present side due to threat of the overflowing around the river. Our council is carrying the river by motion. And then I, we are begging the government to present credit and to make up our council. Present it like what you have done in our group. All of us are not going to be able to live. We want to do this and do it. The people of the local government media could appreciate the government background water facilities could be extended to all towns in the local government. We plead that efforts at ensuring that the property is done. Mass is back, mass is back, and should be petrified so that the people of this area can give a sign of relief. And the governor responded. I told you that roads like the Pere Ido road that has been mentioned are already captured. Our 1,000 kilometer project that we're going to embark on across the state, not just in the north. So, virtually all your rural feeder road will be addressed in our ramp initiative. And the ramp initiative is our rural access to agriculture marketing project. Our water will be greatly assisted also by the World Bank and the European Union. That not big for them, what you are seeing in Eroda or in Ebeda or the parts that were laid from Mobile uh, uh, all the way to the Faki and Adu will not happen. But we've taken advantage of our relationship with these international partners, and that is what is helping us to fix many of these physical projects. We're basically just benefiting from our creativity and innovation. It's not that we have the resources. There was a point about erosion and ecological problems. And I'm glad to inform you that we also have another project that is being supported by the World Bank, which has go full steam into helping us with many of our ecological uh, problems. We have what we call the new map, that's the Nigerian Erosion Watershed Management Project, which has given us a sizable amount of money to uh, help channelization, dredging, erosion control across the state, not just in one part. So the bridge that has been, has been mentioned in Okeako is under this program and will soon uh, fix that, that bridge. The entourage moved to Ikere Ikiti in the South Senatorial District. Mr. Governor and his team ended the town hall rounds in Ado Ikiti, the state capital for Ikiti Central Senatorial District interaction. In Ado, we need a segmented area by like area. In Ado, as an area in Ado, we need construction of roads from School of Laws, Construction of road from Mission People the Vanilla Street via the Ferry Road, Matthew Street, construction of road from Matthew Street to a green market, green road market, installation of street light 
at the whole home delivery scheme. Then construction of drainage, toilet, and public toilet. The road, the Grigiri, and the Uli. Construction of drainage and toilet, and fall over the over the on roads, Kajola and Olobe. We have the station of roads from Kajola and Olobe to Baba Street. All interaction apart from ensuring citizen participation in budgeting for them has always ensured high budget performance as well as community ownership of projects cited in their area. It is no longer budgeting for the people, but budgeting with the people. An innovative way of ensuring optimum budget performance and community inclusion. All right, that's where we draw the curtain on today's episode. Remember to join us in subsequent episodes as we bring you highlights of the second year anniversary. Do visit our YouTube channel for previous episodes and kindly drop your feedback via our social media platforms. Till next week, stay safe and goodbye. <laughs> Yeah.